As far as the pop world's concerned, Darby's probably contributed about as much as Lionel Blair has to spot welding. Not that there haven't been good bands deserving of that all-elusive record deal in the area. So in the end, it was left up to us at the BBC in Derby to round up half a dozen A&R men from the major record companies in London and put them on the spot. On September 12, 1985, I was joined live in the studio by representatives of London Records, Electra, CBS, Intersong Publishing, Atlantic and Chrysalis Records. Not only were they surprised to find out that the motorway north of Watford isn't cobbled after all, but that the selection of demo tapes from local bands that they listened to and commented on weren't as awful as they'd previously thought. As a result of this on-air convention, Chrysalis Records signed up a previously unknown reggae band from Derby, the first band in the city's history to ever achieve a major recording contract and the first reggae band ever to be signed by Chrysalis Records. <laughs> Thank you to Chris Baird there for looking after the station for me for the last two and a half hours. Actually, he got offered early redundancy by the BBC last week, but he thought 400 quid and a cracker jack pencil wasn't really worth very much. Welcome to another evening on Barbed Wireless. Tonight, all our special guests, all from uh, different record companies down in London, A&R men and publishing people, they should be joining us in a few minutes. He just nipped out of the chippy. How common, eh? That's the sort of programme this is, though. Good and rootsy and down to earth. Plenty of uh, music from local bands tonight. Start off with something which is Trey's Alternative, though. The sort of thing that people come up asking me for whenever I do discos. Killing Joke, I reckon they're the best band in the world. Just like the Style Council reckon they're the best band in the world and Dire Straits reckon they're the best band in the world. Yeah. Make your own mind up. This is called Love Like Blood. Don't love like blood. Uh, as I said before, a band who reckon they're the best band in the world, and apparently any critics who disagree with that belief suddenly become a candidate for a group kicking, really. Pretty nasty piece of work, uh, that band. Anyway, tonight, as I said, uh, I suppose a couple of candidates for group kickings, really, especially if you're sort of in a band and you're struggling a bit, because we've got a bunch of A&R people. Those are the kind of people who are always permanently out to lunch or else in meetings. Uh, what they actually do all day, we'll find out later on, because we'll be meeting some of them, playing them some of uh, the music from some of the bands around here, including the Henshaw Brothers, Junior C Reaction, Jamming Heights, Arctic Charter, Phil Rushton, Nietzsche, oh, loads and loads of things. Anyway, you'll hear it during the programme. But well, first, I'll play this one especially for Gavin in Birmingham. It keeps uh, pestering me to play REM, and I've brought me LP in with me now, Gavin. This is from the album Fables of the Reconstruction. It's called Life and How to Live It. REM from the album Fables of the Reconstruction, which I never played when it first came out because uh, I hadn't actually listened to it myself, to be quite honest. I play it on for Gavin, who keeps pestering me for it. That's called Life and How to Live It. 6.30 until 8 p.m. Catch us now and tune in again and again. Tell a Christian, let it go. Maxi Priest and the Caution Band from his debut album on 10 records, that's called Your Safe. All the records on it, though, were previously available on various independent labels. But tonight, we're talking to the big boys from the big labels, the ones who are permanently out to lunch. They're actually in Derby tonight to see the Henshaw Brothers playing at the Blue Note Club. I know it's quickly introduce them. There's a guy Moot from Chrysalis Records. Hi, guy. Hello. Oh, yeah, give us a, he gives us a wave, you know, there's, a, <laughs> there's radio for you. A man with a, well, I suppose you could say a certain bland charm, Alex from uh, CBS Songs, and he's got a funny surf. Hi there. Oh, thanks a lot, Alex. Paul Morgan from Atlantic, who had nothing whatsoever to do with the signing of a band called Friction Groove. Thank Same. you. 
Good evening, Paul. And Chris Page from Intersong Music, who... Well, who exactly are into song music, Chris? Uh, they're the best music publisher in the world. <laughs> well, who, have they, who did they publish? Uh, Hall & Oates, uh, just for a start, Frankie Abroad, Elton John. Do you want me to go on? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marilyn Kajagugu, and uh, a few up-and-coming uh, names that we'll be uh, well aware of in the future. All oh, right, once you've had the plastic surgery. <laughs> and, of course, the opinion that matters, Pete Sadler. Mine? No, thank you, yeah. Oh, no right. heavy metal tonight, though. No. I, well, well, I don't think these young lads in, around this table are into heavy metal. Paul is... That's <laughs> actually Pete, so you know. Really, we just forgot to cancel you tonight, so we thought we might I as well know, get you in. Yours is the opinion that matters. <laughs> and uh, I we're I still know. waiting for Andy Woodford from Virgin Records and uh, Steve Edney from Woman Records to come in tonight. OK, we'll have a listen to the first band tonight, a band called The National People's Gang. Uh, used to be known in the area as Katina Twisted Emotional Blue, former members of both of those bands. They've got a mini tour of Holland lined up for the end of this month, I believe, uh, in which they're going to be making loads and loads of guilders on it. Play uh, a track which appeared on the Concepts of Success compilation album put out by Square Dance Studios. This one's called Love Is Blind, and then we'll follow it up with their cover version of Matt Johnson's Soul Mining. Tracks from the National People's Gang. The first one was called Love Is Blind, an old emotional blue number which they've revamped slightly. And uh, the next one was a cover version of uh, Matt Johnson's Soul Mining, taken from the album of the same name. And to our panel of experts now, from uh, the record companies and the publishing companies, uh, we'll start off with Paul Morgan from Atlantic. Right, the vocals are quite agreeable, but I'm afraid the chorus for me is just totally repetitive. What are you actually looking for big production then when you're listening to any tapes? Not sensitive? really. I mean, me personally, I tend to. Uh, I prefer to receive an 8-track demo than 24 tracks because the band, in a way, with a 24-track demo is trying to off-put you by sleep production, etc. Whereas I prefer just to hear the song. OK, we've got Alex CBS. Alex? Hi. <laughs> um, the first one I thought was OK, and the second one I didn't like because I prefer the original. OK, let's move now to Guy Moot from Chrysalis. Guy, you've, uh, you've already had this album, haven't you? The concept of That's right, album. that's right. And uh, quite a good album as well. A good cause, at any rate. Um, the first track um, I didn't particularly like, although he has got quite a distinctive vocal style. And uh, the soul mining version, uh, well, I, I prefer the original as well. Chris Page from Intersong Music. Uh, basically, I think I more or less agree with the others. They said everything that I said uh, while the record was off. Uh, I thought the first song was uh, a little bit gloomy uh, and sort of dragged a little bit, although the vocal was quite agreeable. And uh, like the others, I'm going to cop out and say that I do prefer the original of Soul Mining, and I think it's one of those songs that is best left untouched. Mm -hmm. OK, there you are, a couple of guys with opinions and not a copy of The Enemy in sight. 
Uh, going to another track now. This is uh, one of the, well, I think one of three reggae bands uh, currently in Derby at the moment. A band called Jamming Heights. Still waiting to get their first single out at the moment. They're waiting to remix it, I believe, and uh, should be coming out sometime over the next month or so. Uh, they've got a single, the single that's coming out is called Ready For Your Love. Uh, in fact, they're built around a nucleus of two people, Hubert Holden, who's played with various different bands around the area, including uh, some session work that he did with various members of the Naturalites in a band called Lovers Arena, and also Natty, a guy only came over from Jamaica about two and a half years ago, and uh, in Jamaica he actually spent most of his spare time hanging around the studios out there. So he's living in Derby now. This is his band, it's Jamming Heights, Ready For Your Love, then you'll hear some very rough tracks recorded on a four-track, uh, one called McIntyre and one called Oh Mary. Lord of mercy Three tracks from Jamming Heights, excerpts from them anyway. The first one, uh, Ready for Your Love, which should be the next single uh, when it comes out. Well, their debut single, in fact. And the other two, uh, Rough Demos, which is recorded on a uh, home recording equipment, four-track studio. For somebody who really likes four-track but wouldn't dare sign a reggae band, uh, Paul Morgan from Atlantic Records. Actually, I'm afraid you're right. Both myself and Atlantic and the version away from reggae. But for me, the first track was the most promising, maybe because of production, I don't know. But it had a nice feel to it. I'm afraid that's all I can say about reggae. <laughs> okay, uh, what about Steve Edney? Because uh, you've heard the first track before, I believe. Yeah, I, I like it more and more, actually. Um, didn't like McIntyre very much. I thought Oh Mary had a bit of a, a scar feel to it, which would be lost when they go into a huge studio and you know work with someone, well, a producer. Mm, but, it, but it is only actually uh, Natty himself on vocals and bass and the keyboard player, so... <laughs> right. Um... I thought the guitar playing was really good on that. I mean, it's, it's re repetitive like all reggae guitar seems to be unless you're a brilliant guitarist. But, um, no, I like that. I, I play that for pleasure. What, ready for your love? Uh, I think yeah. I'll probably play Oh Mary more. Oh, right, that's nice. OK, Tony Newland's Electra. Um, I quite liked it rhythmically. Um, I felt that, like a hell of a lot of reggae records, there wasn't a great deal of lyrical content there. Um, and it was a little bit predictable, but I think that I think that the actual sort of groove was really nice. Yeah, I liked the first track. Okay, Guy Moot, Chrysalis. I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a good groove. <coughs> again. Um, I, I don't think it's quite good enough to shine out above some of the other rec uh, reggae releases that we've had this year. It's not really uh, doing something new like uh, Brown and Levi or Wayne Smith were trying to do. Someone like Wayne Smith. Um, under Miss Langtang, 
I mean, it's got a totally different groove to it, totally different rhythm. And it, it's just refreshing to listen to, whereas this could quite easily get lost along with a lot of reggae singles that are around at the moment. Mm. OK, Alex, uh, CBS. Um, I'm not a great reggae fan, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I did like the first track a lot, possibly because, as I say, the production, um, the lyrical content, as Tony says, is not great on a lot of reggae records. And um, I think a lot of people are a bit wary of signing reggae acts because the amount of money it takes to break an act, and um, not many reggae acts, as you know, do sell albums, which, where the, which is where the money is. In the song music, uh, Chris Page. I thought it was uh, pleasant to listen to. I could sit home and uh, listen to that. I, I uh, like Steve, liked uh, the O'Meary track. I found, though, that uh, the problem was that it all became one one groove, a good groove as it was, it all became as one song by the end of it, and I felt myself sort of nodding away as if I could sort of nod on for hours in that same groove without ever changing. But uh, for all that, I thought it was quite pleasant to listen to. Yeah, people might not notice the difference, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. <laughs>